welcome one welcome all and it's the circuit of americas in uh well, austin texas and we had a great couple races yesterday with the trucks race the xfinity race where kyle larson ended up winning shane van ginsbergen getting that th 30 second penalty to end the race and frustrate us uh, all uh the trucks race had that connor zilch uh just basically blow a tire going into turn one and then somehow battled all the way back into the top five so very exciting races here for the nascar series and we also get to cap it off with a sunday nascar cup race which this might be the most interesting slate on the board and a lot of it if you are not familiar with coda you know it's a road course it's different than what we've had and we also have some really good pricing and some really interesting starting positions that i honestly can't wait to talk about and stats how are you doing? I know that Van Ginsbergen uh, beat was a little bit rough yesterday, but we battle through. We're going to win today now, right? Yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we get a little bit better luck this time. Yeah, those. The, I was. We were talking before the the, uh, the show. I was just looking at the score corrections, moving from like fourth to third to first, and then down to eighty fifth. And I'm like, oh man, because I wasn't watching the ride. I didn't get a chance to watch the race uh, live, so. You uh, you filled me in on exactly what the penalty was. Not fun, but from what I understand, SVG did look uh, impressive as he does on these type of courses. He's a road course specialist, so uh, yeah, it's gonna be. There's some names for the guys who, if you're new to NASCAR, you're gonna see some guys priced up that you don't typically see priced high this week, and then you're gonna see some guys who are like the big names of NASCAR, not necessarily getting all that salary that they usually do and that's obviously because we're dealing with a road course it's a different type of animal we get right turns instead of left and um yeah so it's going to be it's going to be much different than uh than we're used to than you guys who are maybe uh, new to the NASCAR game so it should be a fun day yeah and speaking of some of those guys who are priced a little bit lower than you normally expect you got guys like Brian Blaney and Joey Logano both 7500 and 7400 you got guys like Shane Van Gisberg at 9,500, you know, starting 12th and stuff. So very much a, a different reality than what we see from week to week. But what we have seen in the past, what, about three years since there's been a, a, an influx of road courses into the NASCAR series, it's really been a, a skill that you almost need to conquer now. And this is a ticket to the playoffs from you know, maybe a guy like, you know, I, Butcher has a bad example, but Michael McDowell. I know he's good on plate races and stuff, but he's a guy who has won in the past. Chris Butcher has won in the past. Ross Chastain won here after double punting both Almendinger and Bowman into the, one of the final turns. So this is a, a very exciting race, a very skill-based race. And there is only, I think it's 70 laps. I think it's 16, 16, and 38 laps for the stages here. Uh, and if you are unfamiliar with the rule change that NASCAR made this year, there is cautions again after the stage ends. So this basically means that you have guys maybe on differing strategies. Do you value the stage points or do you value going for the win more? Michael McDowell did talk about this in length. He said, oh, we want to go for the win, but maybe after a poor qualifying that could change. You never know about it, but it is a very big deal. And a guy like Van Gisbergen where stats, we know one thing's for sure. He ain't going to care about stage points today. He's going to pit right before the stage ends on stage one and two. But a guy like, let's, for example, say William Byron starting on the pole. Does he value the playoff point for winning a stage, right? This is uh, all very important stuff that we probably need to talk about. And, you know, go ahead and give your, your track layout here and also talk about what strategies we might see today from these drivers. Yeah, so, I mean, just the, the big difference that you're going to see is there's not that many laps, right? So, we're dealing with, uh, I want to say it's about, it's a three, it's 3.4, 3.5 miles, the, the track. So, We've got 68 laps. Last week, we had 500. So there's your big difference. Dominator points just are not that significant um, at tracks like this. It's going to be more about place differential, um, especially on DraftKings, that we're going to be looking towards. The pole sitter has not uh, has, has tended to not do all that well on this track. Um, so that's really going to be the big difference. Now, we the other difference at this track uh, that we were talking about before the show is they've moved the the restart line from where it was in the past. Now, for those of you who've watched races here before, you'll see that first turn that they make coming after the restart, these guys could get bunched up. And that's primarily where all of the chaos happens and where these guys kind of get knocked out, spun around. Uh, it happens in that first turn. What they've done is move back so that these guys are not as bunched up coming into that first turn. These guys will get like six wide 
in the past on that first turn. They spin out. And the other thing that you will notice on this race is the cautions. Just because the guys spin out doesn't necessarily mean the caution flag is going to come out, unlike uh, your traditional type of intermediate track or short track. Once you spin out, the caution is going to come. It won't come here because you've got kind of a, a large out of bounds where these guys can they'll spin out, they'll be in the grass, they'll be way off the track, and they're out of harm's way. And because the, the track is so uh, is so large and so long, you are not going to interfere with traffic coming around. The other thing that you will notice is most drivers will finish on the lead lap. So that's another thing. I think the the over under on that is like 31 and a half at some at some books. You'll see most guys, unless they wreck out of this race, they're going to finish on the lead lap or they have some sort of mechanical issue or, or something like that. So uh, you're not dealing with lap traffic. The guys out front, it's going to be clean air the whole time. Not a lot of cautions, although wreckage is possible. Now, I just anticipate, as we've seen in the past, a lot of wreckage. I just think we'll see less of it. I didn't get a chance to watch the races this weekend, so Rubio, you would be able to maybe kind of help me with that. But my understanding was like the x um last night, Xfinity, we just didn't see as many wrecks as maybe in the past. So maybe we'll get a little bit of a cleaner race today. Yeah, I mean, you know, Coda has that one turn one where on the restarts is where it gets a lot of uh, a bunched up cars. You know, you got 30 cars going into the same turn and those stock cars and stuff. And yeah, we didn't see anything too bad. You saw your typical punts, Austin Hill trying to punt SVG there, uh, then got a taste of his own medicine and the S's. Uh, I don't see a ton of wrecks happening. I think we're going to see a clean race, right? If we do get into a wreck, shit happens, right? You know, we saw what Chastain did on the final lap. What was it just a just a year ago uh, or two years ago? It almost feels like I can't even remember. But uh, you always have the risk of being punted, right? Going into some of these turns deep into the deep into the race. But one thing that is for certain is that the biggest concern that we have is the track limits. There was 37 track limits penalties for the trucks and Xfinity races yesterday combined. Uh, what the track limits looks like? Well, if you're unaware, uh, the uh, Circuit of the Americas has a little bit of a turn where you go right, left, right, left, real quick. Well, a lot of these drivers, they might dip below. All four tires go below the white line, I believe it is, and uh, or you know just go below the curve. Boom! And that's a thirty-second time penalty, or even a drive-through. So SVG last night on the final lap cut the S's, dropped all the way from second to twenty-eighth after penalties. So that's something that we can't control. But if your guy does get one early in the race, he can easily recover. You know, we get seventy laps. You're not going to get lapped too much at all. Um, and really, you have a good chance to kind of. Uh, surge back into the top 20 if you're pitting before the stage ends as well. So lots of uh, lots of talking points here. But first, we're going to get into the stud range here. We have a ton of drivers to talk about. Let me go ahead and get the filter out here. And I also have to make a big congrats uh, to Big T last night. $92,000 in MMA. Big congrats to the guy who is turning 40 next week. And we also, what was it on Wednesday, I think, or Thursday? Uh, what was it? JVC with a 90k hit stats. Is that right? Yeah, came uh, fourth for uh, the FanDuel. Um, the lot, the um, well, I guess it wasn't so live. It was kind of uh, remote, but the the finals for NBA. So sitting at the top for quite some time, but uh, got run down there late. But uh, fourth place, not too bad. Yeah, fourth place is not bad at all. I know you guys were in first. That was a day with some crazy chalk bust, or you know, just a whole bunch of collection of slates. And I know that Bryce is in the DK final yesterday, and. Honestly, good times to have, uh, you know, in the RPS Discord. And I know that uh, you know, Big T winning 92K almost felt unexpected. I just got randomly got a text after I left his place. He had the nuts. And sure enough, it held. And that's great. You know, we get all sports here for one price if you want it. And we get a code, March 15, 15% off your first payment here at RPS. You know, join in. We got college basketball winners. We got MMA. We got NASCAR. We got every sport that you can imagine. We got it covered from top to bottom. And stats, let's dive into the stud range here. I got four pretty solid drivers. I got Kyle Larson, who won the Xfinity race here last year. We have Tyler Reddick, who's the odds-on favorite, and Christopher Bell, who is about uh, plus 750 to win this race as well. And then the odd man out, but someone who has very much done well at road courses, Chase Elliott. So talk me through this range and what your plan is here at the 10K uh, range. Yeah, so this uh, – I mean, we could start with Reddick, who is just been uh... – you know, one of the best road course drivers on in this in the next gen car. So, you know, 10 5, it's obvious why he's so high. He's going to be starting third. I think we'll see quite a bit of ownership 
um, on Reddick. Where's the uh, the current odds right now? I know he was close to the favorite. I mean, it depends on the book right now, but he's pretty much it's it's him, Gibbs, Byron. They're all really close to being the co favorites. The what you have to look at here now. I didn't do this, but because of the fact that there's a few of these guys who are the favorites who are starting up high, you may want to uh, limit just how many of them you have in the same lineup. Um, you know, it kind of naturally happened for me, so I didn't really put in a rule for it. But if you're single build, if you're uh, doing a single build, you may want to uh, limit maybe how many red or using Reddick and Bell together um, in this top range. And then I would go down to, you know, and add Byron into that mix. And uh, uh, who's the other one that I'm thinking up at the yes. top? But Gibbs, right. So because there's just only so many laps, right? They're not going to get a lot of dom points. They don't have a lot of place differential. So we're really looking at finish position and place differential for this race. So you want to be careful there. But yeah, I mean, Reddick's going to be a, a, obviously one of the top plays. He won here last year. He's got a fifth place in 22. 21 was the, was that the rain shortened year? Was 21? Yeah. yeah. So it's a little tough to look back on that. But obviously he's going to be uh, one of the favorites. He's going to be, he's going to be in contention. 10-5 high price tag, but we've got some value. So you can fit these guys in. Chase Elliott, I think it's going to be fairly high owned. I mean, Chase has been great on uh, the road course. He's been great here. He's the one who won that race that was rain-shortened. He had a fourth-place finish in 22. Did not race here uh, last season. But again, just a really he's historically been a great road course guy. So you can't really sleep on him. Starts ninth, um, so not maybe as much upside as some of the other guys. You're paying up for him. I think more people are going to probably like Reddick uh, than Chase. But I don't think you can sleep on Chase Elliott. We, you know, this is our thing every week with uh, Chase Elliott. We, we kind of, you know, we dive in and we're like, well, I don't know if we necessarily both dive in. I think I've, I've drank more of the Kool-Aid with Chase Elliott than you have. But, um, you know, these are his type of tracks. He's, he, he may not be the same guy he once was at these tracks, but we know the potential is there. So it's going to be tough. Uh, you certainly don't want a full fade on Elliott. But if you want to go under, you know, if you want to be – in the low 20s, something like that. If you're mass building uh, lineups, that's going to be under the market, I believe. So uh, you, you could go ahead and do that. But Elliot, listen, historically, he has been pretty good on these tracks. You got Kyle Larson, who has uh, another guy pretty good on these uh, on these road courses. Um, he has a win on, a, I think he has one road course win at this particular track. It's been kind of hit or miss. I mean, that rain shortened race was, was a second um 14th and a 29th the last two years so uh what's the start position is 15th kind of that mid-range 15 i want to look at my uh you know i got so much data here but like the range where we see the um by starting position like where the most uh success has come from especially from the top tier guys it's not been in the start it's not been in the top five it's kind of been down in that six to 20 range, which is a big range, but it just, it just to give you an idea. So you do want the guys who are starting um, maybe a little bit down. And that's primarily just because they get a little bit more of the place differential and you're not getting all of the, um, and you're not getting those down points that you typically would. So, yep. you know, Larson, again, these guys are all going to be owned. I think bell as well. Uh, I think bell's probably going to be the least owned of all of these guys in this range. I don't know. I, I, have to go back and look at yours, but I think these guys are going to be in the 20 to 40% range with Reddick and Elliott, I think being uh, up at the top and the next two tiers going to be Larson and Bell. I do like Bell. Um, Bell starts, but he starts fourth. So again, you're, you're only going to want to use maybe one of these guys starting in the top four or five for, uh, for your lineups. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I got Bell and Elliott about the same ownership, and a lot of that has to do with Elliott's starting position, kind of giving him that little bit of a boost, right? The nine spot gives you what? He wins the race, right? It's eight place differential uh, spots, and that sounds very marginal. But in a road course where there's only 68.6 down points to go around, those eight points matter a ton. And that's why a guy like Kyle Larson, in my opinion, especially after the win yesterday, he might be one of the uh, the higher owned guys in this 10K range. I think he'll be higher owned than Reddick. And a lot of that has to do with just the starting position, right? And also, just for the note, you know, balance builds. We did have uh, Mario Don Yeezy mention it. It's where it's at. They are 100% where it's at today. There isn't a, a whole lot of reason to dive below the 6.5K range. And maybe that $300 discount you get with Larson over Reddick could be that reason, too. 
Uh, but a lot of it, you know, that 15 place differential, I think if Larson scored fifth and Reddick's got, you know, third, Larson's going to kick his butt every time in terms of fantasy points. So uh, you have to value that uh, PD a little bit. And that's what makes Elliott and Larson just slightly good, you know, slightly better floors or, you know, a little bit more upside, right? But Reddick, I really think can drive the, drive the car into the lead. You know, like I said, every point matters, right? Even if you only lead 20 laps, right? That, what is that? That's uh, – <laughs> Seven, six and a half points, six point seven five points. Screw my math. I'm not great at math, but you really just have that quick, and you know it matters a ton. And I think the odd man out for me here, it, it sucks to say it. You know, I know he's been good here and stuff, but like Elliot's the one that I'm kind of under on. But I think all four of these guys are just you know good plays. I think you're right though in this range because of the balance builds. I think you only want one guy here, and Reddick is my guy right now. Larson would be a very close second. Then it would be Bell and Elliott there, kind of, uh, you know, third and fourth. The reason why I like Reddick, though, still the second odds on favorite to win the race, just behind Ty Gibbs now. Ty Gibbs is now the race favorite at plus 330. Uh, the reason why I like, uh, you know, Tyler Reddick, though, well, you, you already mentioned it. You know, they got the course history. You got everything around it. He's great at road courses. You know, you get that, like, security with him. And we've seen it to where, you know, you look at these past races. I don't want to compare Xfinity and Trucks to this race, right? But it's okay to play someone from the front of the pack, even without Dom points, because their finishing position is so likely to be high. And I have confidence that Reddick is not going to go for these playoff points or these stage points at all. I think he's going to go strictly for the win. And that's really what sells me on him the most. So let's go ahead and dive out of the 10K range now. Let me go ahead and get that filter set up. But really, it is a good conversation up here in the 10K range, because I think the 9K range is even a little bit more... Uh, uh, a little bit better. And I even think the AK range, uh, you could even like just make raw lineups with, uh, I think, like 2K left and have great teams here, stats. So it is an interesting slate. Let me go ahead and just filter this to less than. And we want 10,000. And again, Saber Sim, you guys get access to that with the all in package for RPS. It's a great tool and a great uh, place for Sims and Optimizer alike for all sports, too. It's great. Uh, stats, when I dive in here, we get the pole sitter, William Byron, 9,700, look great in practice, look great in qualifying. He is the guy, and he's also very solid at road courses, right? Ross Chastain, a former winner here. You know, we get Shane Van Gisbergen, 12th place starting, looked great in the Xfinity Series last night, obviously won in Chicago last year. This is a good range. I think you got a little bit of upside here, and I have almost made a rule to where I, I have not almost made a rule, but we haven't talked about Ty Gibbs yet. But I want one of at least Reddick, Bell, uh, Larson, SVG, Byron, and Gibbs. One of those six in every lineup. Byron and SVG are the two that pop out in this range. What about you? Yeah, I would agree with you there. The thing you have to worry about, I mentioned it earlier, is the just the, the lack of success from pole sitters at this track. But um, listen, Byron, you know, Byron could get out there. And lead a bunch of laps and win this race. Obviously, he's, he's going to be one of the uh, one of the cars to beat. But what I'm worried about here are the cars right behind him, starting behind him. And he's got two really good Toyotas behind him, and that's what I'm worried about for Byron. So I'm going to be a little bit, um, I'll be a little bit more cautious on my Byron and uh, my Byron ownership than I am with some of these other cars up here. Right. So SVG, we've talked about. He looked, I did not get a chance to watch it last night. Obviously, that penalty uh, killed me. For what I understand, he looked great, which is understandable because this is what he does. I mean, he came in, what was it, last year or the year before in Chicago? Last year. And yep. It was last year, yeah. So in Chicago, he just like, uh, he, he he's dry, like, it's a different way of driving. Like, he just knows how to drive these type of races. Like, I guess that's probably why he, he's on the edge. That's probably why he got the penalty is we, he was just cutting, you know, he was cutting it really close and then he got the penalty. I did not see it. He was also um, super pissed at Austin Hill, rightfully so. <laughs> what happened? Did he just push him down, like, where he had to go out? Uh, yeah, he gave him a little bit of a taste of his own medicine, basically, after getting punted in turn one. Okay, there you go. So, but I, I just, he's going to be, he is the best driver here, right? So you you cannot sleep on i took him uh as far as the bets i forget it was plus 1400 i believe it was he's going to be the best driver at this particular uh type of racing at the at the road courses so um you know starting 12th i like that i like that place differential that you get with him on a driver that can definitely win the race 
So I, I like I like SVG here. Now Kyle Bush was finished second uh last season here, starts 16th. I think kind of I think people are sleeping a little bit on on Kyle Bush. 9,200. Um, he's kind of, I don't know, he's like maybe the least sexy play in this 9K range. I liked him on FanDuel as of right now. I've got him as a uh I've got him as a core play on on FanDuel, believe it or not. So and I might wow. I might switch that up, but I I do like Kyle Bush a little bit more there. But um, you know, it's just his form has just not been that great. So that's where you got to worry about. But I think Kyle Bush may be a little bit underlooked today. Um, Chastain, no one's got better track history than Chastain. Right. So, I mean, was he got a second? Right. He hasn't won. I'm just trying to bring he up. Won uh, oh, he did win. Right. And he's got a, like a second and a fourth. Right. Something like that. Chastain. Yes. He's got oh, two fourths. So he's got two fourth place finishes and he won in 22. So, I mean, he's been the best guy in the field um, at this at this track. So that's another guy who I think potentially I mean, he starts. Starts a little high. That's the problem. That's what's going to depress his ownership a little bit. And again, you don't want to play too many of these guys starting up at the front. But with his track history, um, you have to give him some. You have to give some love to him. But with the D, the way the DK scoring is, it's going to be tricky. He's going to have to, you know, he's going to probably have to win this race, uh, lead some laps with it, or if not, get in the top maybe two or three, depending on how the race goes. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you've just got a lot going on at this, um, you know, in this price, in this price range, um, that I think is good. Did I mention it? Did I, I didn't talk about Truex, right? And Truex and, uh, Byron that we, you know, Truex, Truex, I, I just think like last week he surprised us last week and last week was a wacky week because of the, the yeah. tire wear. And we just, we just didn't see that. Come. I mean, it, it became a race that we just did not, um, anticipate. And then the veteran drivers were just really good at being able to manage the tires. And then you saw guys like Truex that, that race just set up perfectly for him. Um, and he's a guy, he's been decent at the road courses, but where the, the Sims are really important. I think you're going to see a lot of the younger guys. That's why you're seeing a lot of the veteran drivers with the low prices that they have. These guys need to sim the, do really, uh, a lot of racing on the Sims, not where the veteran drivers really excel. You see a lot of the younger kids really do well at that. So this is not going to be that type of race where I see a lot of the uh, these veterans uh, perform all that well. And where he's starting, I just don't like uh, much uh, in the way of Truex at all this week. So, um, yeah, I think the 9K range is definitely interesting. Like I said, when we get to the 8K range, it might be even more interesting than that. But my least favorite here is going to be Truex for sure. Yeah, I'm with you. Truex, definitely my least favorite. I think Bush would be a close uh, close to him as well. I just – right. I, I don't want to spend 9K on, on 9.2K on Bush and have him, you know, finish like, you know, 14th or 13th. I don't think it would be good enough. And I feel like, you know, that's a good race for him, right? There's a lot of great drivers at this place. And that's what makes this this uh, slate so challenging, right? I think there's a ton of good plays. Like, I can count 15 great plays off the top of my head. And Bush doesn't really fall into that category for me. And neither does Martin Truex. But with Byron and Chastain, you can absolutely make the case that Byron can absolutely go out and win this race. He could lead, you know, 30, 35 laps, you know, pit before the stage ends, right? Stay out in front, right? That, that's a true possibility. Chastain, of course, history speaks for itself. Fourth, fourth, first, right? Like, you have those two I can absolutely stand up for and say, I kind of want those, right? Then I look at SVG, right? <laughs> it did great in the rain in Chicago, right? Absolutely owned the entire field, drove away from the pack. And then all of a sudden you come in now where, you know, look good in the Xfinity race. If he gets third, if he gets a top five, right, his odds have gone from plus 1,400 to plus 1,100 last night to plus 850 for the win today, right? As we were speaking right now, he's plus 850. I, they, they're almost expecting him to just be in that mix, be in that top five. And I think it's even odds for a top five. And if he gets that, that's a strong chance for being optimal. That's, you know, 38 finishing point. That, that's 47 fantasy points, you know, before you even dive into, uh, you know, fastest laps or lap sled or anything like that. There's a great chance that SVG can be in the winner. Just the same can be said about Byron and Chastain. Can't say the same about Flush and Truex. So that's where this kind of fine line comes in, right? Even though they might only be, you know, six to seven points off, pay, uh, you know, off on paper in terms of projection, right? It's the upside that matters. Those six to seven points can turn into a, you know, just a measly min cash and a single entry to maybe win it a thousand bucks up top. That's the stuff that matters here. And uh, you want to maximize that the most you can. I feel like Truex and 
Bush don't have the win equity, don't have the top five equity that Byron and SVG and Chastain offer. And that's the way I'm going to approach this slate. If I'm going to ask two questions, can you move up at least 10 spots in PD? The answer is yes. Probably going to give you a strong consideration. Can you at least get me a top five? The answer is yes. Probably going to give you a strong consideration. I don't think you need to complicate a slate much more than that. You know, and we're going to get into this 8K range too, where this 8K range is absolutely loaded. And we haven't even gotten to the 7K range, where I feel the same exact way. You got Ty Gibbs, who is now the race favorite. You know, he is now plus 330 to win this race. We saw how great he was at Bristol. I know this is a completely different track, but the, the win is coming for Ty Gibbs. It is coming any day now. And I, it sucks that we're going to get it at plus 330. I almost wanted to wait a week. You know, I wanted to stay in these like plus 1800s because that win is coming within the next month. I think we'll have a win when we go into May. And uh, I don't want to call it now because he's the race favorite and stuff. But, you know, we have him here. We have AJ Allmendinger, a great road course driver, a guy who it wouldn't shock me to see him top five. I mean, it, it absolutely wouldn't shock me, right? Is he driving for uh colleague, which is the same team that I think SVG is driving for, right, in this race, right? I think they're both calling for this race. So if you like SVG, you might as well like Almondinger. Almondinger was up there in the front of the pack uh, the entire race. SVG's uh, track house. Track, oh, is it track house still? I yeah. thought I saw calling for some reason. Track, I knew he was track house for Chicago. I didn't know if it was, uh, yeah. My, uh, it might be calling. Am I, uh, I, I thought it was track house, but I don't know. Let me check it up. Let me All check right. that up. That's right. a big deal because yeah. if I like, you know, I was trying to make the case for Dinger. If I like Dinger, then I, if I like SVG, then I have to like Dinger, right? Uh, so let me go ahead and get this up real quick here, stats. I don't really want to delay the show too much. No, but no. It, is, it is slightly important. It is SVG and Dinger on Colleague Racing this week. It is Colleague. Okay. My, yeah. My so it, like, okay. If, if you like, you know, SVG, might as well like Dinger. Dinger's really, really good at road courses. Dinger was in the top of the pack at the Xfinity race almost the entire race yesterday. I know it's two different levels of competition, but it's not like AJ Allmendinger hasn't gotten it done on road courses here either. And I'll get to his course history here in a second, but like I want to talk about Michael McDowell, probably the best PD play on the entire slate. If he if he just goes for the win, right? That he is on record saying that we're not going to go for stage points, you know, we're going to go for the win. That's what we want. If he's going to do that, well, absolutely, like if from starting 27, a top 10 is easily achievable here for him, right? And if you guys, we have the playbook up on the site too as well. It goes over uh, Michael McDowell's case, but I'll kind of just do a short summary here. Uh, basically, McDowell at this track, you know, just on road courses in general, has been really good. All right, that's all you need to know. And why would you not want a guy starting 27th, you know, at 8K? He is the top projected guy on the entire slate for me. I just think it's starting 27th so far back. It gives you a good blend of upside. It gives you a good blend of floor. You get a perfect uh, mix of both worlds there. I'll let you talk about Hamlin and Suarez and stuff, but it, it's it's a fun slate here, and I think it really starts to, the puzzle pieces really start to form around the 7 to 8K range stats. Yeah, we're going to – this is pro – Part of the reason you can leave some salary this week is because you may not have any of these guys in that 10K range really make it, and you don't necessarily need, because of that, you don't really need these guys uh, that sub 6K range either. So everything's kind of built into the, um, where it looks like the 7 to 8K range. We've got a lot of really good value, and it's not just value. It could be the guy scoring the most points as well, right? So uh, these guys in the 8K could be the point leaders for the day. Gibbs could be the highest point guy um on the slate or up there at least so we could leave more salary than maybe we necessarily would on some other tracks maybe not as much as a restricted play track but i think we could leave some salary here safely um and this is the reason why now you didn't talk about uh suarez or hamlin i, I to me um so we've got suarez is or hamlin is starting eighth i just think it's way too high for Hamlin, I'm I'm totally fine with um, absolutely fading him, not playing him in your in MME. I did put a touch in, but um, if you want to go totally uh, a total fade there, I'm good with that. And Suarez, you've got you had him, I think, a little higher than uh, than I thought as far as the percentage. Like or you got him at uh, 15. Yeah. percent I'm a total yeah, I'm a total fade on Suarez I just don't like I just don't think he's fast enough uh don't I mean it starts 19th which is okay I just think uh road courses he hasn't had you know he hasn't had a top 20 finish yet I just don't 
Uh, I'm just not high. And then in this range of the guys that you talked about, there's just so much better here that I like. So between Suarez and Hamlin, I think they're either, you know, low percentage owned uh, GPP plays or just total fades. Now, when you talk about yeah. McDowell, you know, McDowell, obviously, uh, I think is going to be the the highest owned guy. I don't think that's uh, well, that could be a question because Gibbs is going to be up there. But I think McDowell winds up being higher owned um, than than Gibbs. I could be wrong. There actually no the Gibbs now that the Gibbs up uh, the Gibbs um uh, the betting markets are where they're at so Gibbs might get up into the 40s I think you know maybe even close to 50 I it's just I'm struggling with the with the fact that he starts second if he gets that high but I think 40 percent at least where did you have uh where do you have Gibbs you have Gibbs at 34 I think it goes even higher than that so I, I'm gonna say 40 percent on the Gibbs ownership you've got McDowell at 47. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking he probably I'm I'm just gonna say he comes in just below that. I think they're both gonna be high 30s to low 40s. Um, but you know, we're we're kind of nitpicking at that there. McDowell's just history is really good, but he's kind of a an all or nothing guy. He's got a ton of top 10 finishes on road course. He's got seven, he's got a win and seven top 10 finishes on road courses over the last two years. So I mean the upside is tremendous for a guy starting. 27. So I think in cash games, I think McDowell is a guy that you absolutely want to pencil in and he's going to be a core. I think I just moved him into my core uh, right before the show started. I'll, I'll be tinkering with that before, before the uh, race starts. But I, you know, the more I look at it, I, I like McDowell there. I like that place differential um, coming from, uh, from 27. So Gibbs, I mean, what more can you say? We've bet Gibbs, or at least I have several times this year, yes. hasn't hit, has not hit. I'm not taking him this week, not because I don't like him. It's just the price. I just can't get on board with the price. I think there's a few guys that I put in um, that we're going to get some better, uh, some longer prices on that I think um, are worth the, the risk. But yeah, if you told me who's going to win the race, we're not, and we, we don't have any odds attached to it. I like Gibbs here to win this race uh, personally. So I like where he's starting. I, as far as winning the race, I, I like the guy starting a little closer up to the top. It's going to be tougher to get there from the back. I think Gibbs wins the race, but as far as a bet, I just don't think you could pay the price uh, for him in the betting markets right now. So those are the, those are the guys there. And Dinger, l- listen, AJ Almendinger, that's a that's he's definitely an all or nothing. Almendinger yes. is like you see him at he he's a he's a road course guy. Um, I always seem to be overweight in, on the road courses. He'll be like he'll be up front at some point. Like it just always seems, and then he could, and then he'll quickly get to the back. Something will happen. He'll <clears throat> he'll get himself in in some sort oh, of a mess. Two, two years ago, he was first going into one yep. of the final turns, and like he, and on paper, he got thirty third or thirty fourth in that race, right? So like <laughs> exactly. on paper, it looks horrible, but like it, like context matters in that situation, right? We're like, man, he sh- he, he should have gotten a top three at minimum before Chastain. Well, won. If I I don't I I feel like that was probably it's hard to remember all these races I feel like that might have been on a restart like where his troubles happen I don't remember but I'm like he's 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 a super aggressive driver here so he may benefit from the fact that maybe it won't be as much chaos and these guys won't be as bunched up maybe he gets the benefit of that so yeah don't you, you can just never sleep on uh, on Almadinger in on uh, road courses you know the 14th starting 14th you don't love I wish he was starting a little further back. Um, but listen, he's always been a great guy on the, on the road, on, uh, on road courses. So he easily could finish in the top five here and be in the winner. So I think all of these guys, well, three of these guys, I think are really, really strong, uh, strong contenders consideration. I put Almendinger kind of middle of the road. And then to me, Suarez and Hamlin, if you don't play them at all, I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah, and uh, just to kind of go into uh, why I think Suarez might be a little bit higher known than you might think is the fact that uh, in 2022, you know, he had fifth in the Watkins Glen, third in Pocono last year, uh, you know, in Indy, he got third. Like, he's got a little bit of that road course reputation, right? That was my thought coming in is that he's good on road courses. And that's why I think he kind of gets ballooned a little bit up. I'm kind of in agreement with you, though. Like, I don't think you have to plan it, right? If he gets a top 10 and beats you, you know, that's where you just talk it up and say, great job, Daniel Suarez. You know, you haven't really been uh, consistent across the road courses. I think there is 12 to 13, 14 drivers at minimum who can beat you. I'm very cool with just saying bye to Suarez. I, I absolutely am. 
Uh, the thing is, though, he does have a little bit of a reputation, you know, for being good at road courses and stuff. So I kind of like him just a little bit, but I don't mind completely punting him. I do just like, you know, say goodbye to Denny, Denny Ham, not going to play him at all. McDowell, you said it best. Great. Gibbs that next tier. And then Dinger is a guy where I love to mix it. Like uh, McDowell is almost a guy I'm considering, you know, just going double the field on. And that, you know, that basically means a lock at 47%. Uh, just because, you know, you know, if you rack and lose, that's fine. But I feel like if you finish this, this race, you know, with all four tires and stuff, the chance of being optimal is so high. With even a 12th place finish at 8K, I think it's uh, incredibly high to be in the optimal uh, lineup tonight. So let's go ahead and go to this 7K range. Uh, this is another another range. I keep saying this is the last range I'm actually going to say this. Um, this is like just an absolutely absurd. Oh, I did it wrong. Oh, I hope I didn't skip over it. There we go. Uh, we got Chris Busher here. You know, very good on, on road courses. You know, we know how what he can do. Alex Bowman, ready for his course history here. I think it's a second, third, and a fourth, or eighth, third, and a fourth. Eighth, eighth, I got it wrong again. Eighth, second, and a third. So uh, yes. that's three top tens for Alex Bowman. I, I swore off Alex Bowman two weeks ago, but you know what? We're back, baby. We're back. We're, we're going to be back in Alex Bowman again this week. Then we have Ryan Blaney, where starting 28. Not a great road course person you know, in terms of reputation, but I'm going to make the case for him here. Has actually been better on road courses than you may expect. Uh, if you look at like his recent finishes, you know, 14 Penske on road courses, he's got a sixth here at Coda. He's got a, a 2022. He also uh, got a you know 17th here where you're starting 28. It's not the worst thing, especially in this price range. Got 21st here last year. I'm not going to go through his entire course history, but you know, a 12th at the Roval, you know, a ninth at the Watkins Glen, 13th in Indy. There is upside with a guy like Ryan Blaney. Joey Logano, a little less so, but starting 35th. If you guaranteed me a 15th place finish for Logano, I'd probably take that. I would I would be willing to take the 20 points in PD and the 25 points you get for finishing position. I think it's like 28 for 15th or something like that. Like, that's not bad at all. You don't want to just completely, you know, go away from that. Um, and I know that these guys don't have a great reputation at road courses, but we still can't dismiss their starting position. And we have to note, you know, Logano, a 15th place finish is a disappointing week for him. But you know, when you're starting 35th and you're getting those PD points, you have to absolutely be a little bit uh, intrigued. Uh, my favorite in this range, though, is Chase Briscoe, starting 32nd. You know, just a good wheelman, absolutely has great results on uh, road courses. Starting 32nd with that minimal risk, you know, to go backward. I think he can absolutely rise up and get a top 15 here. 7.1 is super cheap. I do think that out of you know the talent in this range, I think Bowman and Bush are a little bit better on road courses. I think Briscoe would be the third. And then I also wanted your opinion on Kamui Kobayashi. Uh, he's got a very quick car. He got, I think, ninth fastest time in practice. It might have been ninth or twelfth in practice. Uh, very fast. Uh, but the one race he did have, uh, I think it was last year, not in this race specifically. I don't know which track it was at. But he ended up getting 33rd. I didn't get to check out the race to see why. But this car is pretty good. So, I mean, I don't know what to do with this range stats. I do know that I will probably have two or three guys and like, most of my teams today, uh, consisting of Busker, Bowman, Blaney, Briscoe, and maybe Kobayashi. Well, the Kobayashi, I got a good. I have to look because the data I got, he did not finish, uh, or his practice times were not that great. So I got to go back and look. I had him uh, like twentieth or, or so in. It was in the practice. individual lap time that was. Strong. So he had an individual. Okay, so yeah. his overall practice wasn't that great. So I. Because of that, and you don't have a lot of obviously history, and, and obviously he's a he's coming in here because he's a road course guy. Uh, his one attempt was in where was he? Did he race in uh, Chicago or was it Indy? He raced in Indy one time, right? Uh, I, I, I think it was probably Indy because it was a little bit later in the season. It yeah, definitely, definitely wasn't Chicago. No, it wasn't Chicago. It was it was Indy, and he didn't do well there. So, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I. I saw you. I saw on your list that you were way higher on uh, Kobayashi. And I think you're. From listening to you now, you're you're really um, that's going to be based on the practice time. So I had some totally different. I had a totally different take on the practice time. I don't think he's very fast, so I'm I'm going to be very low, if not uh, totally fading uh, Kobayashi um, here. So I mean, but he starts at a good at a good place, 25th. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be fairly low ownership. I'm I'm just I'm passing on it totally as of right now.
I'm going to go back and look at that practice data, but I looked at his overall practice and it was in the twenties. So I just, I just didn't feel good about it at all. His one attempt um, in NASCAR road course didn't impress at all. So I kind of punted him. Uh, when you look at the other guys, the, yeah, the top guys here, look, Bowman, I like quite a bit. I think his price in the betting markets, see where it's at now. Um, I thought, yeah, I mean, it's, it hasn't really moved since I took it. I liked it at the plus 4,000 that you could get over on, um, on FanDuel. I think it's worth it. He's got upside to win this race and at plus 4,000, I think it's worth a shot. So, I mean, let's see, he starts 17th. I think a guy, if obviously, like you said, I, I like the way you broke it down. Can these guys finish? Can they finish top five? Can they get, um, how much place differential were you looking at? 10 like, PD minimum. 10 PD, like. That's a great way to look at it because you really only need about 50. If you get 50 plus points, you're going to be in the optimal lineup here. So um, that's a great way to look at it. So for me, if I think Bowman can win this race, uh, that that's more than enough. He doesn't have to lead a lap. Just get up there and at least contend for this race. Bowman's going to be in there. So I like Bowman and I especially like him at plus 4,000. I just think there's a ton of value um, there for on, on Bowman. Uh, great. You know, he's he's been like silently, like quietly good at road at road yeah. races so you know butcher's got 11 straight finishes of 11th or better on road courses so he's got that starting position of 20th another guy who's just you know i'm going to be pretty high on in this uh in this 7k range just because of that track history i mean just go back and look at what he's done on uh on road courses i mean it's just all they're all really really impressive finishes now if you go to this particular track he was eighth last year and then before that a 21st and a 13th again the 20 you know 2021 we kind of is a little shaky but his recent road course history last season was phenomenal so i think for a guy starting 20 it's another one where i think the place differential on a guy like busher is going to be uh is going to be really good easily finishes in the top 10 and that could be good enough uh for us here um you know blaney the Fords don't look good, right? So the Fords are the uh, the Fords have the longest price in order to to win this this race. Um, it's the worst manufacturer of the three, uh, you know. But you're getting Blaney starting at 28, so it's it's one of those like you, you don't like a couple of these guys. We'll talk about like Logano's in kind of the same boat. Uh, don't necessarily love Blaney or Logano, but um, that place differential it's going to be tough to pass up. I know someone in the Someone in the uh, chat was talking about it earlier. Like, uh, you know, people are going to be kind of, you know, the ownership on some of these veteran guys is going to be higher than it should be. Maybe that's true. We'll see. But, man, to me, it's tough. It's going to be tough to pass up on Lagan, who's starting 35th. I don't care how bad he is. And when you look, I mean, let's look look at, um, you know, I, I mean, as far as cash games, are you you play the cash games right on the? Yeah, I play on, a little bit of cash. Absolutely. Are you are you taking a Lagan? Are you taking Logano at 35th in the cash games? I think you have to. Um, yeah. This this isn't this isn't you know 100k at first, right? This is like strictly trying to double your money, right? And with a guy like Logano, a 20th place finish is almost good enough, right? What if Reddick had a spin on the final lap, right? And I know anyone can have a spin on a final lap, right? But if you're playing these front of the pack guys, you have a chance to cook your lineup. Like Logano can have just a measly 20th place finish and almost, you know, you know, beat out a significant portion of this race, probably finish in the top 15 drivers in scoring. And, you know, if you guarantee me six drivers in the top 15, you know, I'll, I'll take that in cash all day. You know, you, there's no, no one's going to have a ton of upside to kill you. And uh, Logano, I didn't want to play Logano coming in. I don't know if he has the upside in tournaments to completely win at all, but I do think in cash games, you can't pass on him at 35th. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could, I just think cash games is, I mean, there's just the, uh, the, the downside is the, the floor is just so high for a guy yeah. like Logano that you kind of have to play him. But I mean, if you look at his recent races on, uh, on road courses, it's been pretty good. I mean, four out of the last five were top tens. So you, you know, it has his history here at this particular track been all that great. I mean, he's got the third place in 21, which again was a bit of a wacky race and not good the last two seasons, but man, it's, it, it's going to be tough for me to be underweight um, Logano, even in, in GPPs with um, with where he's starting. So, uh, you know, Logano and Blaney, I'm going to be more Logano than Blaney. But I, I think two guys that weren't, you know, in the Ford, the Penske, and we got another Penske guy with uh, with Cindric in there as well. You know, not not high coming in on on those guys, but the fact that they're starting 35th and 28th, I think you do have to take a look at them. Uh, Cindric starting 11th, just don't like it at all. Yeah. 
Um, I think you could safely fade um, Cindric there. And then Briscoe, again, great starting position. So I think you've got to take a look at Briscoe. He's in a Ford. I get it. But we're not looking to win the race here with uh, these guys starting in down in the uh, in the 30s. I think you've got enough. You've seen, you know, he's got that sixth place here, 15th. I mean, Briscoe can get, uh, can potentially get in the top 15. Do I love him? No. His recent history on road courses is not all that great. His sixth place was uh, at Indy, but he's got a lot of finishes of 20th or worse in his recent road course races. But again, I just don't think you can sleep on some of these quality drivers who are starting in the 30s because. You know what? Getting a top fifteen is not out of the question for uh, for a guy like Briscoe. So um, I think you have to play him. I think you could safely just the the one guy you could safely punt is Cindric. And I'm probably you know if I stick to what um, to what I had here earlier before the show started, I'm punting Kobayashi as well. Yeah, no, I, I like it. That's why I like talking this slate with you too. We're gonna get a final projections update for you guys who are members here. We're gonna push through a final projection and ownership update probably around one fifteen or something. Uh, but yes, uh, Jake, I think you're right. As you know, you don't want to cap your upside. You know, uh, you know, you know, want to pay attention. I will say, you know, Greg's price doesn't matter for me, right? If you're getting 7,400 for Greg's or you know, 7,400 for Logano, why would you want to pay you know one k less? I know Greg's starting near the back and stuff, but it's one of those things too where like it's a very good point. I, I feel like we're never accustomed to seeing Joey Logano at 7,400 in stats. I just did the math. All right, here, uh, let's say Logano, 15th, 18th place, right? 18th place. He has gotten a ton of top 20s on road courses. I didn't, ex I, I wasn't familiar with his game there, let's be honest. And here's what an 18th place finish would get him. It would get him 25 finishing points, and it would give him 17 PD points. Oh, you're already at 45? Like, I, I, mean, I could oh, do it, yeah. I think he does have the upside. I, I changed yeah. my tune. I yeah. changed my tune. I think he's got the upside to be in the winner. You go to 12th, all of a sudden now you're speaking 55. That's a, it's a hundred percent optimal, especially at 7,400. This is uh, you talked to me on Lagana. I think Blaney, you can even throw in that a little bit yeah. of the mix. I didn't expect, I honestly, you know, this is the reputation, right? This is the reputation of road courses. Logano, not great at road course, not, not up here, but hey, being right here at starting 35th isn't so bad at 7,400. That's for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to this next range. That's a great point. I'm actually going to uh, make a pretty large adjustment on him. Uh, so that'll be a, a very interesting one to have. Again, code March 15th, 15% 15 off your first payment here at Run Pure Sports. You get, uh, you know, we have the racing package. It's, you know, the racing only for 20 bucks a week or 60 bucks for a month. But we also have all sports for one price for 30 bucks for the week or 80 bucks for the entire month there. And that doesn't include Saber Access. If you want Saber X Access, uh, you know, absolutely. You still use that code for 15% off. Now, let me go ahead and make sure my adjustments are correct here. Boom. Here's the filter. And I got Eric Jones staring at me starting 38th at 6,800 stats. I didn't know what to do with Eric Jones, right? I, he's, he's almost like a Jekyll and Hyde. Sometimes he's here, you know, sometimes he's down here, but starting 38th, not the worst, right? It's not bad at all. And then all of a sudden you look at, you know, guys like Keselowski where, Definitely not a road course guy. But starting 36, you know, he's back there. I probably won't have any interest in him. Bubba Wallace, really strong individual lap time. Noah Gragson starting last. And Mario Donizzi, love it. Noah had faster practice times than Logano. I will take Logano's career over Gragson right now. And I love Gragson. But I will give Logano the, the, the reputation bump over, over Gragson here in terms of wanting to play him, right? 6,500. He's only 900 off Logano. You and the Gregson isn't someone I really come, uh, you know, I come alive for, for, you know, road, road courses. I don't expect him to be a guy who thrives on road courses. And I, I almost feel way more confident in Joey Logano's ability. And I could be wrong. I know that when I look at what uh, Gregson's done in the Xfinity series, it's fine. But we do have to recognize there's like 10 great cars in that series. He was always in one of them. Uh, but stats, talk to me in this range. I honestly think Gregson's the cutoff. You can play Gregson. He's absolutely fine. Anyone below Gregson, I'm out on. I don't want to make this, this show boring, but anyone below Gregson, I am completely out on here. What about you? Well, all right. So I agree on the Grax. I, I like Gregson uh, quite a bit. So, I mean, you got, you got the guy starting in the back. 
um, obviously cheap and not, he's not terrible road course guy. So, I mean, where does he have to finish again? When you start doing the numbers, where do you need him to finish to get into 20th. the optimal? 20th was optimal. I think that's it. And, and I think certainly top 20 upside there. So I like Raxon quite a bit. I agree with you. Like that's the best play. Um, you know, below that, I think you're, you're kind of fishing a little bit. Now I did play guys below that, like, uh, Gillen, listen, Gillen was in the winner, I believe last year. Um, so, and Gillen, you know, starting 26th, don't necessarily love it, but he's, you know, he, he has had some good success at this track. Let me look, uh, at Gilligan, uh, Gilligan, Gill Gillian. See now, uh, Logan, you know, Logan made fun of my, uh, Logano, <laughs> Logano. Uh, my Logano <laughs> pronunciation. Now I'm not going to pronounce any of these guys, uh, correctly. So yeah, pronounce pronunciation and uh the english language is not my forte so i apologize to uh to all of you guys but yeah but gillian who <laughs> well, i'll never get it right again um <laughs> i mean he said he's was 16th and 10th last year that 10th finish was good enough to get him in the uh to get him in the winning lineup so i am i am dipping down there you're right i mean there's just not a ton uh below that graxon level the one guy i'm i'm absolutely uh fading is going to be bubba wallace uh, just starts too high for me. Starts 10th. Um, and his history has been, he's another guy. He's a super aggressive driver. And maybe that's, this is the one thing that um, sort of makes me a little bit nervous is the fact that maybe because they're changing that starting uh, where the restart is, that it helps a guy like Bubba. But I just don't think at 10th that you have to worry about it. Like to me, it's going to help someone maybe more like uh, Almendinger uh, than it will. Uh, Bubba because the 10th place finish I don't see him winning this race so I you know I it's it's real tough to get on board there with a guy who I don't think he's finished this this race um yet so I don't I, he's had he's had his issues here and he he's just too aggressive uh of a driver for for here for my liking and starting 10th I just don't like it so um you know then you've got the the, the veteran guy like Kozlowski he's just never really been this hasn't been a track road courses haven't really been his thing um, but you know, starting 36th, I mean, you're taking, you, you, you just kind of, I don't think you could punt any of these guys. I don't think you could, you could totally fade, uh, these guys who are starting that far back just because anything can happen. You get a little carnage, you get some wreckage in this race and suddenly these guys move up and, you know, you're not going to be shocked with a, a, a 15th, you know, top 15, 14th place or something like that from a Kozlowski uh, or Eric Jones, who's starting 38th. So I, I think these guys have to be in your mix. Uh, Hosever starting 18th. I think you could safely not play. Uh, Nemechek, you know, starting 22nd. Don't love it. Um, but if you want to sprinkle in a little bit there, but yeah, in this, in this range, I think Graxon's a pretty strong play. And I think you have to play a little of the Kozlowski and Jones and, um, the other guys, yeah, I'm just not I'm I'm not all that uh, high on. Yeah, perfect. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, you talked me a little bit on Screx, and I, I think I will have interest in 20th place is not inconceivable at all. And all of a sudden, you're now you're just talking about you know over 40 fantasy points is kind of that threshold. Can you get me 40? Gregson absolutely can. I will say, Eric Jones. I saw the comment about the road courses. There was that stretch, and this is you know it was seventh in Indy. You know, 17th at the Roval. He also had some uh, good finishes at the Watkins Glen 10th. You know, uh, he's not the worst, you know, 11th at the Roval again. He's not the worst road course driver, uh, but, you know, he has starting 38th and stuff. You can almost throw him into the same ring as, as Gregson. Maybe you have Gregson a little bit higher ahead, though. Absolutely makes sense there. Uh, stats. I honestly, uh, you're not going to hear me talk much on this end here. Um, I don't like anyone else below. 6K. I want to sound like a little bit of a broken record here, right? Well, why would you play Corey LaJoy? Corey LaJoy got 12th, which is a great finish for Corey LaJoy. He can get 12th. He'll be very happy with it. If he gets 12th, he's probably not even in the optimal. No. And you look at any one of these guys. You already talked about Grex. You already talked about Logano. This is why I like the mid-range build. None of these guys step up and say, Oh, he's got he's he can definitely move up 10 spots, or he can definitely get a top, you know, hell, you can even lower the bar to the top 15 here. I don't see anyone that's scary to fade, and I am fading without any issue here. Stats. No one in this range is going to be in my player pool. What about you? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mixed in a little bit of these guys just because the, the guys who were starting 30th or, or worse, um, and I'm not talking about a lot. I've got like 1% to 3% of these guys just on the off chance. You know, you get a little bit of record. But, I mean, if you're playing 20 lineups, you're playing ma uh, three maxes, single – yeah, absolutely. Don't even bother. I think in the 150, you could sprinkle a few in, which is what I'll be doing. But and only again, only those guys who were starting way back, uh, you know, the Grawl is at 23rd, the the um, Priest at 24. Well, Priest, I played a little bit at 24, but again, not much. I'm in, you know, like a two, three percent. Uh, but Burton, I didn't use at all. The only guy I didn't use um, down there is starting 37th was Tim, uh, Timmy Hill. So is at five, I did not use, uh, but I'm pretty much going to play all the guys starting in the 30th, just in that one to 3%, just on the off chance, one of those guys hits or, you know, that you get, it becomes a race where maybe these, these 10 K plus guys, somehow, uh, we get a couple of those guys in the, in the winter, but it's unlikely. I would not use that strategy in 20 maxes, three maxes. Uh, you could safely just not play those guys. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, makes sense here. I think we're on the same page roughly. I don't mind you getting you know, a couple percent of maybe you know one of these guys down here. You never know. But yeah, I think uh, it, it'll be a fun race to have. I really can't wait to kind of dive in. Stats, we have to go over the winners of the race, and then we'll do our plays of the day. So go ahead. You know, you don't have to give all the bets you, uh, you did today, but go ahead and give out uh, your favorite winning bet today for uh, who's going to win the race. Well, yeah, I gave you guys um, Bowman. Just I just love that price. I'll give you one other guy who's a little bit chalkier, but he's kind of coming in on that next tier after those uh, those those guys who were uh, really chalky up at the top. And I'll take a shot on Christopher Bell. He was plus eight fifty on DraftKings earlier. I don't know if it's still if he's still there, but um, like him more as a bet than I necessarily do um, on. The uh, DFS side, I know you, you're you probably going to be a little bit higher owned on him than I am there, and it's just because of the starting position. But I do think he's got upside, uh, obviously can win this race, and I think plus has 850. I don't mind that price on him. Yeah, absolutely. And if you guys missed it earlier in the show, it was Alex Bowman, 40 to 1, plus 4,000 on FanDuel Sportsbook. So I wouldn't bet it at 28 to 1 on DraftKings, right? So this is where, you know, you really want to get the most value for your, for your buck, right? Those extra 10 bucks can be, you know, what is it? If you bet a $10 bet on Bowman, you could have won 120 more if you just bet it on FanDuel too. So uh, definitely make sure you're getting the best value for that Alex Bowman bet. And same with Christopher Bell. He is still plus 850 on DraftKings right now. So those are fine there too. Stats, you know the rule. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and do under. Let me let me do the threshold here. Let's see. Under, all the, uh, RPS, 25%. So anyone below Blaney. Uh, on this list here that you see right in front of your screen, who is your driver of the day below 25%? Yeah, we, I mean, we've been doing really well with these. This, I, I gotta tell you, I had a hard time. This was probably the hardest one, um, that I could come up with this week, but I'm gonna go with Almondinger down there. Um, I'll take a shot at a guy who's just like we talked about, uh, just before, really a, a road course, um, specialist type of guy he's going to be fairly low owned and can easily shock in a, with a top five type performance so i'm going to take and i'll take almondinger and hope that this this restart change actually benefits him and we see less carnage in this race i love it i love it i think i am going to follow a similar path i do want a guy like uh almondinger my, my wish was i could play svg i didn't realize i had him above uh, 25 which makes sense i do think he comes in above that i think logano and them coming above that we talked about many drivers uh the one that kind of pops off the page below 25 percent and i i don't want to do it but <laughs> i was oh, close i was close it's gonna be uh track house racing i i think i'll do it again Ross Chastain, I think uh, I'm going to be a little bit over on him. The more I think about it, I do think that this is a guy who's going to get the job done at the end of the day. Starting sixth, I do think he comes in really under owned. It wouldn't shock me to see him win this race at all. Uh, I, I'm going to mix him in quite a bit here. So should be a good time. I thank you all for joining us again. March 15, 15% off your first payment here at Run for Your Sports. You can do it for the racing only package or all sports or whatever you prefer. Thank you all for joining us for stats and for I. Hope one of y'all win the uh, win the 100K today. Bye bye.